everyone, and welcome to Flickering Myth TV. My name is EJ Marino, and we have Emer Reynolds here talking about her brand new documentary, uh, Songs for While I'm Away. Thank you so much for joining me. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. I want to say congratulations on this wonderful documentary. You found a balance of telling a, 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 a sometimes tragic story, but having it light and fun. So I thank you for that. It made it a very easy watch. Sometimes, sometimes these rock star documentaries, I'm like, oh, this is sad now. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is a sad story, but you know, certainly the film was more interested in the you know celebratory, tender, compassionate story of. What a great life he have and he had. He had a tragic death, sadly, and you know that's a that's maybe a rock star cliche. You know, we weren't we weren't really interested in that film. We were interested in the film that would you know, celebrate the man, the man behind the, the rock star image. So, yeah, it's funny, it's emotional, and and you know, I think it is enjoyable even with even within the sadness. Yeah, there's a full roller coaster ride. And I also want to say, first and foremost, I have a massive respect for documentary, documentary and filmmakers. You guys do a very important and needed job in our industry, but you also have a background in editing. I have, I have such interest in that. Do you take anything from your editing background into your directing background? Do you get way more coverage than you need? Do you, are you one of those kind of filmmakers now? Oh, certainly. I mean, I was an editor for over 20 years, so certainly my editing background has been a huge influence on my directing work. Um, in particular, I guess, because, you know, the biggest tool the editor has, the biggest skill the editor has is storytelling. You know, that, that's really what you're there for. You're there to, to hone a story, to finesse a story, to understand where a story needs to press forward and hold back and all the modulation. So I bring it, I bring it with me in every choice I make, in every decision I make. And in fact, sometimes I have to try and not bring it with me. You know, I don't want to be the director that's directing as an editor in my head thinking, oh, I've got that now, or I'll not shoot that because I'll never use it. You know, I do try to say, I'll just throw off that, that voice and, and really just, you know, I now have a fantastic editor of my own who works on my material, you know, for me. So I want to give him the full suite of, of options and, and voice that, that I would have wanted as a director. And, and of course, I also had the, op the great opportunity, which, which has st stood me in fantastic stead, to have worked with amazing uh, filmmakers and, and been in the editing chair where, when extraordinary directors were figuring out their material, figuring out their voice, figuring out their approach. So really I got to, you know, to eavesdrop and be very close to that, to that machine. So that, that has, I've learned a huge amount from that too. I'm so grateful for it. I always say it's important for a filmmaker, their editor, their cinematographer to speak each other's language. <laughs> and I think you found that balance of being like, I'm going to say something. I, you might understand what I am saying and they do. And I think that was captured very well here. What brought you to wanting to tell the Phil Lynette story in your film with this? What attracted you to the story other than the whole grandiose vibe of a rock star? Well, I was approached um, to make this film by the producers, Alamar, one of the producers, and Eagle Rock were in the process of developing this, this idea. It was, the time was right to make this film. And uh, they had seen my last film and, and, and had heard that I was a huge Lizzie fan. So they approached me to see, would I be interested in, you know, joining the team and joining the party? And uh, I jumped at the chance because lifelong fan, lifelong love affair with Phil Linnett and uh, called, I have to say Phil Linus. I keep pronouncing it wrong. Dubliners <laughs> say it wrong, it's Linus for anyone out there. But um, yeah, jumped at the chance to make it. Um, huge love affair with many, many hours misspent in my youth lying on the ground beside the record player, analyzing the lyrics and arguing over my favorite uh, Thin Lizzy track. So I, I guess I came at it first of all from a fan and second of all, um, it, you know, he's like a huge, certainly in Ireland and in rock terms, a huge rock icon, a huge figure, you know, this graphic, amazing personality whose film whose story had never been seen on a cinema screen you know it had been told 
some very good uh, rock TV documentaries mm -hmm. about Lizzie and about portions of their, their story, but never been given the full proper epic cinema treatment. So I was dying to tell that story. And, and I think it's an amazing story. I mean, he was a, he was a young mixed race black child growing up in a pretty underprivileged part of Dublin in the 50s and 60s. And this was a time when Ireland was monocultural. You know, there were, there were no black faces in Ireland. He was, people in the film talk about he was the only black child in Ireland. I mean, I don't think that's true, but it was very, very rare. <laughs> yeah. So, and he forged a path out of, out of being so, you know, he experienced racism as a child, experienced racism in the early days of Lizzie and forged this incredible path through his own will and his own courage and his own vision and dreams to rock icon status and wrote some of the most extraordinary uh, songs, you know, hits like The Boys Are Back in Town, Whiskey, well, Whiskey in the Jar he didn't write, but it was a big Lizzie song, Dancing in the Moonlight, you know, so he carved this amazing path out of pretty humble beginnings. And I, as a fan and, and as an Irish person knew, the rock legend, you know, they knew the image, mm -hmm. but didn't really know the man, the man behind that um, that image and, and really wanted to to see it and look at it and learn about it and was very privileged and honored to be able to do that through the film. I, I, I love that you got to tell the story. This was a very unique story. I have known about Thin Lizzy, but I never knew the front man, the story, the whole thing. And I think a lot of people don't even know he was mixed race as well. I think he had this just overall rock star vibe. We are like, oh, I don't know. And I think that was so important to focus on that as well. I want to say, do you have a suggestion for a Thin Lizzy song that isn't The Boys Are Back in Town? I mean, it's an Applebee's commercial here, so we see it enough here. Do you have a personal favorite, even from this documentary, that you're like, oh, this is my favorite song? Well, I have, I, I mean, I have, I have too many favorite songs, unfortunately, but the lucky thing of it being directing it was I was able to put most of them into the film. So uh, <laughs> that was great. Um, I, I have a, uh, two things. I have a favorite album, which is under underappreciated by most people. It's, it's their fourth album called Nightlife. It's Scott Gorham, Thin Lizzy's amazing guitarist, calls it in the film that he calls it their their cocktail album, you know, it's quite mellow. It's quite, you know, there's, there's shades of Steely Dan in there, you know, and I love it as an album. So I definitely encourage uh, your, your viewers to check that out. A song, I think I would choose, um, and it's from his first album. Well, it was, it was an EP attached to the first album. It's a beautiful song called Dublin. And, uh, you know, it, it has this beautiful kind of Spanish guitar on electric guitar, and it's very, very harmonic. and and beautiful lyrics, this great uh, love affair with the city of Dublin that he talks about. And it's probably the first time you can really feel Phil Lynott, the songwriter, really coming into his own as a poet and being able to capture a feeling. So that's the song I'd recommend and Nightlife is the album. I love that you mentioned a song named Dublin, which kind of goes into my next question. During some of my light research, this seems to be the first feature documentary you've made that is very distinctly an Irish story. Is there any more stories from Ireland or close to you that you want to explore? I love that you got to do something close to your own community and your own background. Is there another Irish story that's like, oh, I'm, I'm thinking of cooking this up? Well, there is, um, although the next featured doc I'm, I'm developing and working on now is not an Irish story. It's a, it's a pretty big, like the other ones, big, universal, uh, worldwide type of story. But actually, uh, what's next up for me is, is more Irish-centered. I'm, I'm kind of transitioning into directing drama. So my next few projects are um, feature dramas. Yeah, hopefully early next year, a road movie, kind of a a very funny and sweet lit road movie with that has significant uh, cast attached called uh, that's called donut written by alva kyogen then i'm developing a sci-fi because sci-fi is my great love oh. i'm developing a sci-fi project uh, which is also out to cast called potashnik written by gavin burke and uh, and finally uh, developing a we have we're adapting a, a wonderful book by an irish writer called carl geary beautiful book called montpellier parade and he's a He's pretty well known in, uh, in New York. I think that's where you're ringing me from. Um, yeah, yes, on that, on that coast, the yes. Bar the Scratcher, yeah, there's his bar, so uh, yeah. So that really uh, uh, Irish feature dramas next, but not necessarily documentaries. 
Well, I'm excited to see what you do with sci-fi because you did make a space documentary that made me have anxiety because once we get to space, I'm like, this is too, it's good the furthest. <laughs> this is too out there. So I'm excited to see what you can do there. I, I love that you're moving into feature documentaries, which kind of ties into my big final question. I like to gauge filmmakers, like advice and things like that. Do you have any advice for people wanting to get into documentary filmmaking? What is a tip that you've learned from making this one or any of your other projects that you would give to someone trying to get into it? Because right now with the YouTube era, we're all making documentaries. What would be your advice for somebody? I think my advice would be um, make something that you really care for. You know, don't be... Don't be cynical and trying to think, you know, what what might hit or what what is the world looking for. I think just come out of your own your own soul, your own interests, because that's actually what will communicate. That's what your audience will see and feel. And it takes so much time. It takes so much creative and emotional energy. It really needs to be something you care passionately for and want to communicate. So I would say that that's the biggest thing: be yourself and and, and work from make stuff that comes out of your own, your own beating heart. Which is exactly what this is. This feels so personal to you, even though it's a big rock band that so many people know, it felt like something you genuinely wanted to tell. And I think that comes off in the filmmaking. So I think that's very good advice. Thank you. Thank you. Certainly the film is made with a huge amount of heart and a lot of, you know, compassion and tenderness, wanting to really feel Adam Clayton of you too, who's interviewed in the film, you know, very kindly and gently said to me, you know, you're carrying a big responsibility here, you know, to tell, to tell this story, to tell this man's story. And I, I certainly felt that and was very mindful of it through the filmmaking, wanting to tell something beautiful and tender that would actually honor, honor Phil in it and honor his, his life and work. So I, I hope I've done that. I think you have everyone. This is, uh, Emer Reynolds about the documentary Songs While I'm Away. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me. This was such a fun interview and I learned so much about just this little bit of a film, but learned a lot about you as well. Thank you so much. Thanks for talking to me. Thank you guys. Make sure you guys comment down below, like our channel, subscribe as well. Thank you guys for watching and thank you again.